Hi everybody. So this is the long-awaited studio update um, vlog kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a bunch of clips kind of talking about the process of me trying to upgrade my studio. I'm going to be um, trying my best to use the original footage. However, going through and editing it, I have realized that some of the footage is not usable. There was a lot of construction going on at that time. We had a house being built uh, like across the street from us. Um, so a lot of the footage is kind of hard to hear and things like that, um, which was not my intention. So I may have little clips here and there that um, future Annie has made a uh, appearance in, um, just to make sure that you kind of get the whole story. Um, it was just supposed to be a routine update, a routine upgrade to my studio. We weren't expecting it to take very long. Um, however, it's been about three months and I just now had a chance to be able to um, use the upgrades. <laughs> so, um, and I think, yeah, I think it's been about three months uh, since we started this whole process. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to be doing. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'll try to use the original clips if I can. Um, the Instagram ones that I did, like, in my story updates were pretty good. You can hear them pretty well. Um, some of the, the ones I did on my camera, though, it just picked up too many other noises from the construction and stuff that was going on. Um, so yeah. Anyways, we are going to go into what I did in my studio, what up got upgraded, and kind of the whole process and why it took so long. So, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, so this is future Annie doing this part. Pretend this part is not here. It's not there yet, okay? Originally, what we had was we had a a box that, you know, went into our panel and stuff inside. And it had about uh, 50 amps uh, coming out. And, and so it, ran, it runs all the way there up to here and goes into the panel that's in the garage. And so that... Um, was set for about uh, 50 amps. The problem was is that I wanted a bigger kiln and I was going to need more than 50 amps. So that's kind of the big upgrade that we we're, were doing that we were trying to do for the last three months is getting a bigger kiln, getting more electricity into our garage. Um, but when we went and had this looked at, had you know the, the box over by the house looked at, um, we were just going to have them pull new wire and switch it so that we could have 80 amps and have wire that could hold that much coming into the garage. However, we found out that this tubing um, kind of led us to believe that it went all the way through and under the patio and everything into the ground. Um, but we found out that the tubing only goes a little bit of the way and then the rest of it is buried. So they couldn't actually switch the cable right where we had it so that was kind of our snafu it was just supposed to be a quick easy they come in they switch the electrical so that we can have a higher gauge wire in there and you know come into our panel so yeah so the panels right here in the garage and as you can see it's had quite a bit more added to it so the next step was to just create a new path um, so we do still have the electrical that goes to the garage originally that was like 50. Um, however, we had more added. Um, as you can see here, have it run through the driveway back into the garage. And that was kind of the plan that we came up with after we found out the original wiring that we had could not be changed. Hi everybody, so I figured I'd just update you now. Um, I was trying to kind of make it like a secret surprise and upgrade thing that I'm trying to do to my studio, but it's running into a snafu and of course these things never go easy, do they? Um, so I was gonna talk to you a little bit about it and why it's like, why my shop update's going to be late, um, kind of <laughs> what's going on with all of it. Um, so yeah. So we're looking at like digging in this area to run new wire to the garage, which is over there, um, so that we can have the kiln in there. So currently, I'm just kind of waiting for all of the utility companies and all of them to come out, water people, um, and tell me if there's anything here 
and whether or not we can dig. Um, we had the water people come out, but they didn't really mark anything, so I might have to call them up and have them come back out to mark things. <laughs> Just let me know where it is. I mean, um, there could be nothing around here, but because my shutoff main's like right there, it would be kind of odd to like not have anything coming up to the house over here. So we did have gas and electric come, and so far there's nothing in this giant square where we're planning on digging, so that's a good sign. But like I said, I am gonna probably double check with the water company just to make sure. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at. So that looks that looks like it'll probably be fine for us. We just have to be careful in around this area. We might actually just hand dig this bit right here just to make sure. Um, and then we have our sprinkler system right here. <clears throat> so yeah, it comes out here. So we're gonna have to be really careful in this area as well. So we might just use it the uh, trencher like to here and then hand dig to here and then yeah, go up here for the electrical. So that's what we got so far. We're still looking at trying to just have somebody trench it for us. Um, we're kind of waiting to hear back and like prices and things like that. He did come out and kind of look at the area, but we're still kind of uh, waiting to hear back. Like if we need to do it ourselves, if they have the ability to fit us in. Um, the electrician is off for next week too. So it looks like we probably won't get to digging or actually putting any electrical in till, you know, another two weeks. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what's going on, but that gives us enough time to like put holes in places, you know, like the garage and take down the, um, drywall and stuff so that we can run the electrical and you know, all that jazz. So yeah. So I know I kind of gave an update about the electrical and how we're not going to be able to get it done for the next couple of weeks. However, I do have some exciting news. Today we're actually going to go pick up the kiln. Um, it's a little scary too because like picking it up means like this is going to happen, you know. Um, so fingers crossed all of that stuff with the, like, you know, getting the electrical and stuff in the garage goes really well. Because um, yeah. I'm going to be actually picking it up from another local potter. I'm, I'm buying it from her and yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm, I probably, you know, I won't be able to, to use the kiln in any relative amount of time, uh, especially because we are waiting on a vent too. Um, and I don't even have an update on that. They're just like, yeah, we're super overlogged. So this <clears throat> is the new addition to my studio and it is a lot bigger than my other kiln actually if you were to take off the box of my other kiln you probably could fit it inside this one <laughs> my other kiln so you can see it's a lot smaller so it'll be cool to have something bigger I can make more work um, I won't be having to fire my tiny kiln for like a week straight prepping for shows and stuff, so that'll be awesome. Just do like one or two firings and be good. Um, and then it also allows me to do a lot bigger pieces, which I've been wanting to do, like more raku pieces, more plates, things like that, which I just haven't been able to because I just didn't have a big enough kiln. Because my other kiln, you can fit like maybe one plate in, maybe two if I'm lucky, before it's like full. So, this will allow for me to make a lot more like plates and vases and um, some of my more favorite shapes along with of course mugs and stuff but yeah it's a big big kiln all right so update on the electrical situation with trying to get you know more electricity in my garage so I can have the bigger kiln. I figured I'd show you what the ditch actually looks like. Kind of. We did have to cover it up a little bit like the areas near the house and stuff just to keep it safe in case it rains or something because um, we're probably looking at like maybe next week if we can if not the week after for the electrician to come to actually put the conduit in. So yeah. So ignore the playground equipment and all the things that we've used to kind of cover up the part, certain parts of the ditch. But yeah, so we've got it coming 
out here and you can see how deep it goes it goes about 24 inches into the ground um, and I think we need about 18 to 20 inches for the conduit so yeah and then it kind of goes all the way around yeah and then it will yeah come up here <clears throat> so yeah we got the trench finally dug and we're getting there hopefully we'll get the conduit in the next probably next week if not the week after hi everybody so i'm here to give you an update um i was hoping i could plug the kiln in and use it and all that but as this project of getting more electrical to my garage is kind of been difficult been a lot of work um well it's still not done yet so so i apologize yeah i'm sitting in the dirt um i'm tired and it's been a long day but so um so they they've got the majority of it done the majority of it's correct um i'll be able to have my driveway back um all that stuff's right as far as i understand the wiring is not right where it like connects to the house and where it connects into the garage but they're gonna have to come back on monday to do that and deal with that um so they said like technically i could run my kiln but i'm i'm probably not going to with them needing to replace stuff um so a little frustrated with that and then there's one other thing so the other thing is this plug that they put in we're not sure if it's the right one like technically it should be okay but we're not sure um as far as like the electrical that they need to change the inspector told them it wasn't right so they need to come back and do it again um i did want to say that um but yeah the other thing is this like we wanted to double check and make sure this was the right one uh for the kiln so it's future annie again here to talk about what ended up happening with this plug so they ended up having to come in and and put the correct wiring in and then while they were doing that the first inspector was fine with the plug that we had however the second inspector we had the inspection done again after they changed the wiring to the correct wiring the second inspector said that this the plug was not okay and that we needed to have the appropriate amperage plug for the appropriate like we needed both of these to be the same amperage um, and to be rated properly for what it was supposed to be doing is the manufacturing for the kiln they say to use 50 they say to use a 50 plug to say to use a 50 in the wall the problem is because it's a heating load and stuff like that it has to be rated higher and um, anyways to make it safe uh, for the person people to use they needed these to match just in case if we sold the house, if anything else happened, you know, they they wouldn't be having the the amperage wrong on one or the other. Um, so we had to have them come back again and fix this plug to replace it to make it a 60 amp plug. And we also had to rewire the plug that comes with the kiln so that it matched this one. I know I'm probably not explaining that super well, but that's kind of what's going on is like for whatever reason, the plug that comes with the kiln or at least the plug that came with this kiln was not really the appropriate rating. You know, it's the manufacturer specs and things like that, but it didn't match what the house specs and regulations needed, if that makes sense. But anyway, so we ended up have, having them come back and so they actually did the plug changed out the plug so it has the the right rating changed out this plug so it has the right rating and then after that it was just a waiting game for that one and so i waited another like month i think it was before we actually got the vent for this kiln so we have the vent installed sorry i didn't like record that process but well it's partially installed i gotta put the actual vent 
on the kiln. But it is installed into the wall. And then we've got our digital readout installed as well. Which is cool. So this will give me a little easier time, you know, programming my own, like, glaze, pro uh, glaze firing programs and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited about that. It also connects to my phone. So I can kind of keep an eye on what I'm, you know, what how the kiln's doing and stuff. Um, and I mean, don't worry, I always, like, I'm always home when I'm firing this. Um, uh, but this just kind of makes it a little easier for me, like, if I'm in the middle of something or whatever, I can just check and make sure everything's going okay. Um, you know, so that'll be kind of cool that I can actually, like, keep an eye on the kiln, uh, from my phone. Um, cause it'll connect directly to this and let me know how everything's firing and going. And, and you know, it, also too, it makes it a little easier so I can kind of know what might be going on in the kiln. Um, you know, cause it's kind of hard to tell just by looking at it. So, yeah. So we got that all hooked up and we got that all hooked up. And so now I'm going to be loading the furniture, um, uh, because this, I mean, this is an older kiln and it has been fired quite a few times because um, I bought it used from another potter in my area. Um, she was just looking for something a little smaller, um, which I understand. <laughs> it is a pretty big kiln. Um, but uh, it has been fired a couple of times, but it's never been fired in this area with like every all of this attached and everything and I just want to make sure the electrical's working so we're going to go ahead and do just a test fire I'm gonna put the furniture in it kind of like you would normally when you buy a new kiln just to make sure everything's working so we're gonna do that before I actually bother to put any of my pieces and stuff in it I'm hoping everything goes smoothly because I wouldn't mind being able to run another bisque fire this week because I've got the Ren Faire coming up you might have seen on my phone that it says ember so my so my Instagram followers uh, kind of voted and gave name suggestions and stuff so that is actually what everyone decided this kiln's name is this kiln is known as Ember. I think it's kind of fitting because the other kiln, this little one right here, is actually named Ash. So we have Ember and Ash, and I feel like those names work really well. Um, although, Ash is also a, a nerd reference to Pokemon, too. But, you know, it's fun. Uh, I thought it was a fitting name for a kiln. So we're going to get Ember all full of kiln furniture, and then we'll fire her up. Got all of our shelves loaded up. We've got the vent going and we're gonna run a kiln program for a bisque fire. Here we go. It's running a bisque. So I'm just gonna take it to cone 04, um, which is usually what I fire my bisque to. Like I said, it's empty, there's nothing in it. I just wanna make sure that this kiln can get to what it needs to get to. Um, that it can get through an entire cycle, that the electric, you know, that we got all the wiring right and all that jazz. Um, and I do have, of course, my phone so I can keep monitoring it as well. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna keep an eye on it and see how it does for its first firing ever in this studio. I'm so excited. Alright, so our kiln says that it's complete and it's definitely at a temperature that I can unload it. I'm going to be checking the uh, cones, the ceramic cones I put in there, just to see whether or not they say it got to the temperature it needed to get to. Um, just because sometimes there can be a difference between what the kiln's actually firing at and what the readout says. Um, so I do like to just make sure that those kind of match and that they're where they should be. Um, but it fired completely. It didn't have any problems. It got to temp. It pretty much fired uh, to the estimated time it said it was going to. So it looks like everything's working. Um, the vent was good. Everything kind of worked out. So yeah, we're just going to check the cones and probably unload the kiln. Uh, not that there's any pots or, any, or anything, but I do need to take the shelves off because since we, it looks like 
uh, after I check the cones we'll know but it looks like we had a successful bisque fire and since we did I do kind of want to try to get a bunch of work bisqued in the next day or two but yeah that's what we're gonna be doing I actually have a hard time getting this lid open <laughs> like getting way down deep uh, but I'm actually really excited I think it'll make things a little bit better for getting work done especially because I have so many places where I'm putting my work now that a lot of times it's really hard to make sure I have stuff online in the stores and have enough for shows and things like that so um, I think I think this will be good I think uh, Ember will be a wonderful addition to my studio and I'm hoping that we can just make lots of pots and stuff so I'm still again struggling if you've seen some of my other videos I am still kind of struggling with where I want to go in the future and what I want to make um, of course I want to be, continue to be inspired by stories and even write my own stories to make pottery off of yes um, but it's just like how I make the pieces what kind of techniques what colors I feel like using in the future um, that's a little bit more subject to change just because of all the discontinuings and things that have been happening in the pottery industry this year. Um, so yeah, I'm still kind of wrestling with that, but I'm also just kind of taking it chill, making designs I've already made before. I'm not doing any more big story collections where I'm sketching it out and trying new techniques or anything like that. Um, we're keeping it pretty chill for the rest of the year. I'm just making stuff I've always made, things I'm familiar with, designs I've done before. So. Yeah, and we'll have this this big kiln to help us fire all of the beautiful things. And yeah, so I just want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you will watch more videos. Uh, subscribe, follow along on my pottery and writing journey. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching. Bye.